Thank you very much. Thank you for joining my session. Hello, everybody. Um, well, my session, as you can see, is promoting exper experiential learning through the use of virtual tours. I would like to introduce myself a little bit before I start. Well, um, I've done an MSc in TESOL and a PhD on testing and assessment. I am a school owner uh, teaching foreign languages to Greek students. And actually for eight years now, I use online teaching. Uh, I use a, an educational platform, uh, having both asynchronous and synchronous uh, uh, tools. And uh, I'm a teacher trainer as well. Well, um, today, uh, first of all, we are going to talk about the importance of types of virtual tours and how we can use them in asynchronous and synchronous teaching. And I will show you some examples from my personal practical experience and how I have used them in my class. Actually, um, I believe that virtualizations allow people to experience and virtualize from wherever they are. Um, they encourage students to become active learners and engage with the world around them. And this way, the students get real and full experience of being in the classroom. So I believe that visual tours uh, maximize online uh, interaction, not only between learner to learner, but also between learner to teacher and learner to content, which is the most uh, difficult one, I believe. Well, uh, there are three different types of virtual tours. Uh, there are the 360 videos, uh, which use movement, people, and sound. Um, oh, sorry about that. Okay, I need to minimize my, okay. Uh, to take the audience on a journey. Um, then there are virtual tours that have elements of uh, information. You can click and find information. It is uh, something like a research, and they are used to highlight features and smaller details. And there are the virtual tours, uh, walkthroughs, which um, uh, they create a walkthrough of a place. They provide a smooth experience and allow the audience to get a feel of the place. And uh, my presentation today uh, is focused on uh, virtual tours walkthrough. Well, uh, let me show you now. Um, actually, I'm going to uh, copy and paste uh, in, the, in the chat room. Uh, let me see. Still sorry. I will share it again. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Where is the chat? Here it is. Okay, so I'm going to share. Um, some links with you uh, in case you need to. Oh, sorry, I cannot share them. I don't. Ah, here it is. Okay. So if you want to follow me, so use them or enjoy the trip with me. Uh, and well. Can you share? Um, yeah, Let's... you just need to share that with all panelists and attendees. Yes, yes, and that's what I wanted that... to do, actually. I wanted them to have the links if they want to. Um, I'll quickly uh, just reshare that. Their computers, they can't do it then, yes. So, uh, okay. as you can see now, uh, there is a visual tour here, a walkthrough. This is on Franz House. It's an example that I have used. Uh, as you can see, you can rotate your camera around and allows the students, uh, any learner, to rotate and uh, have a tour around the area. Another one is Google Maps. Google Maps permits students, again, to rotate and navigate uh, the tour. And actually, these are the ones that I focus my presentation today, and not the 360 videos. Well, um, also I believe that the visual tools walkthrough are suitable for different learning styles. They simplify complex problems or situations for, for especially younger students. They are innovative and enjoyable. And I believe that they have a higher level of engagement and understanding of students. 
Well, uh, actually, we can use virtual tours in both asynchronous and synchronous uh, online teaching. In asynchronous, uh, uh, allows students to experience, to interact with the content, they can explore independently, and they can concentrate in key areas. In synchronous learning, uh, they do all of them, but on top of them, they allow students to interact with each other, interact with the teacher, elaborate. The teachers can uh, uh, do some group work with the students and uh, actually uh, stu allow students to choose what to do uh, and guide the whole learning process. I will show you some examples later on. Well, um, regarding the asynchronous uh, teaching, I believe that Miraport is a fantastic tool um, to use 360 videos mainly, um, text, images, and worksheets. Also, it allows live and formative assessment uh, allow, and uh, allows students to draw. And it has uh, open-ended tasks and many more features. Um, other ones are Articulate 360, and that's the one I use. However, it is rather complicated. Uh, and Google Slides. What I want to focus on today also is not the asynchronous though, but the synchronous teaching. That is how I use the virtual tours uh, in my classes. Actually, I use them in different parts of my lesson and for different reasons. And this depends on my students' needs, on my students' difficulties, and uh, the needs of the lesson. Well, I can use it in the beginning uh, to introduce a topic, a new lesson, or inform my students about something if they don't have any knowledge about the topic. Sometimes I need it to intrigue a topic, uh, to motivate my students to participate and uh, focus on my lesson. Uh, uh, also, I use uh, virtual tools in the middle of the lesson, sometimes to explain or engage students, or if I want to elaborate something or get my students to interact with uh, each other. And finally, I use it at the end of the lesson, uh, sometimes for fun, uh, students enjoy it a lot. They spend a lot of time actually navigating and exploring and experiencing, and experiencing it. And they have very nice conversation, uh, conversations about it as an extension, and sometimes even to evaluate and assess them. Well, um, we can support visual tours using uh, a number of tools and apps, online tools and apps. For example, we can make interactive images to support the virtual tool uh, that we use with our students. Thinking and doodling are two tools that um, uh, allows us to make interactive images and I will show you examples of them. Uh, also, it is really um, interesting to use virtual tools in Zoom breakout rooms, create groups or pairs, and get students to virtually um, travel um, around a place or a museum or uh, see some art and discuss about it. Uh, they can create interviews or role plays and dialogues. Then um, a last thing is debates and something to produce. Using virtual tours, uh, students can, um, you can generate debates among students and students can produce a lot of meaningful uh, products like writing products, most of all. Um, a nice tool about debates is Kialo. Uh, I really like blogs as well, and you can use WordPress or Edge blogs to create some. And another thing that I, um, uh, uh, often use are messages. I fake text message in which you can create fake messages. So I get my students to um, uh, role play and um, feel like they are um, having a conversation outside the museum and talking about it and sending each other emails because they 
are lost um, or any other role play games you can find. So now I will share some practical uh, experience from uh, my lessons. Uh, in an elementary level, um, I use um, a virtual tools uh, for descriptions and group works in order for my students to question and ask questions actually and discuss. Let me show you an example. For example, I have created uh, groups in one of my elementary level uh, group. Um, two groups that they have chosen uh, two museums. One group had the British Museum, the outer uh, place of the British Museum, and the other group, the Louvre Museum. Then I just asked them to navigate and uh, have fun with it, and, gave, and I gave them time to explore. Um, and I do two things. I either let my students to guide me to choose whatever they want us to do, and I adapt my lesson to that, or I ask them to focus on something. For example, if I want to practice a grammatical form like comparisons, I might ask the, the, these two groups to compare and discuss about the buildings or the surrounding area, the people that are waiting outside the museum or any other uh, uh, interesting things um, I want to. Sometimes I use role plays. I found them really uh, interesting and fun for the students. Uh, uh, for example, for this project, um, uh, I asked them some, some of them to be the guides and some of them the tourists and have conversation dialogues between them. You can visit uh, the visual tours if you like, because I have actually paste your, these links to uh, the chat room. Another way to use the virtual tools is uh, as an extension to the book I use. For example, this is a, a unit for um, ancient Egypt. It was a reading comprehension uh, for a A2 level class. And I wanted to, to engage them and motivate them as well as, as well to experience the pyramids and use the language that they have learned from the reading comprehension. So what I did, I asked them to virtually to visit uh, the pyramids um, and uh, uh, we discussed about it and used the vocabulary they learned. Another example is about academic level uh, English. Uh, uh, IELTS students uh, uh, need to experience uh, uh, things to have a role plays, uh, not only for the speaking tests, but also uh, because they're going to visit um, a foreign country and practice real language. And I use virtual um, tours of, of uh, universities. This is one, that's the Library of Monash University. So I get them to uh, go to the information desk, ask questions, um, prepare letters, um, move around, ask people. Uh, my last example is uh, an example of advanced level. Um, most of the times I use virtual tools for details and group work, and again for discussions and debates. Uh, I, I'm, I have here the same um, project actually with uh, the museums. Um, I used both outdoor and indoor virtual tours in this case. I got my students to discuss about their visit to the museums and we discussed about important facts that we found online about the museums. And then I let them free to visit the inside place and uh, choose an exhibit. And actually it was very interesting because the exhibit that my student chose was the ancient Greek one, and they really wanted to talk about the ancient marbles. And even though that was not my intention and uh, the lesson I was prepared for, I let them guide me and choose whatever they wanted. And that's what I like about virtual tools. Um, so we had a big discussion about ancient marbles, and then we visited, as you can see here, we visited uh, the ancient marbles in the British Museum. And then we had a debate about it. And in order to have the debate, I um, um, 
did an interactive image of the museum and the people uh, that look at the exhibits for them. I will show it to you. So they can uh, click on the people and see what they think. Some of them are against uh, uh, sending the um, marbles back to Greece and some of them are um, for. So students had to debate on it and discuss on it. Um, and you can actually create them again. I just reminded to you with link, uh, with link, think link or Gmail. Sorry about that. And finally, um, uh, uh, in, in closing, um, I, I want to tell you that I know that it's really difficult sometimes to find all these virtual tours. Uh, I spent a lot of hours doing that. I have a list for you though, uh, in Becklet. Uh, so you can, I have uh, it open in order to share it with you. So you're more than welcome to have some of them. I have a list of, with different topics like animals, uh, university campuses, um, museums, art, street arts. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, and I'll be happy to answer your questions because I think we have some minutes left. Thank, thank, thank you, Irini. Thank you very much for your presentation. That was, um, it was very too. interesting and lots of, lots of great links there. Um, mm -hmm. we, we, we've actually run out of time for questions. There weren't many questions, okay. that, um, but I'll let you look through the chat and we'll send through some to respond to um, if possible. Okay. But thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Tim. That's all right. Uh, we're just going to take a quick break. Uh, it's about three or four minutes, so enough time to dash to the bathroom or grab yourself another wine from the fridge. Um, and then we're going to have our final uh, plenary session with um, Amy Malloy. So just take a couple of minutes to have a little break. And then about 7.20, um, we'll be back here with the final plenary for the day.